Hello, wrench lifers. <laughs> Ready for Meat-tober. Weekly update number one. Very exciting. I don't have my computer here again because whatever. Um, so today we're going to do my weekly update. So I'm going to give you what, what you know, basically what I ate, what I did, how I felt. Uh, we're going to do some mindful moments as always, uh, and then at, I'll give some general thoughts after the moments, and that'll be it. And we'll do a, a food rule. We'll get out of here. How about that? Meet Tober, week one. Today is the 6th. So, I'm going to shimmy over here, move this over, uh, let's get a good spot, cool, because I will be updating everything I say with images on the left side of the screen, so if you're listening to this, it doesn't matter, if you're watching this, it will matter. So, let's freaking go. I'm going to look at this stuff on my phone, but I will, like I said, in the video, it'll be up here on screen. So, week one, here we go. On the 30th of September, at 4.30 p.m., after an 18-hour fast, I ate this meal. Uh, as you can see in the picture, we have a small, you know, a small amount of guac. Then we have a big bowl of pico I made. I did not eat all of that pico, but that's just basically heirloom tomatoes, regular tomatoes, garlic, on red onion straightforward the the guac was probably about probably less than one, one avocado's amount of avocado garlic red onion again and then in the bowl at the end that would be i'm not sure if that was the pork shoulder i finished or the beef shoulder but that was it uh then after that i uh fasted for a while so, the next meal I ate was 51 hours later. But in between then, on the second, we have some activities. So, we'll put this up here. Uh, October 1st, 154. We did play a round of disc golf in the morning. I didn't log that, but I imagine that was probably about like a... Mm, maybe two and a half mile walk in the woods. Then I rode the uh, the Seneca Loop, which I ride, the mountain bike. This was on my geared mountain bike, uh, 9.4 miles, uh, just under an hour, average speed 11. It's, I didn't have the heart rate monitor on, but, so the calorie burn says about 470, whatever, who knows. Um, following morning, I still hadn't eaten. Uh, I did play disc golf in the afternoon. This was a Tuesday, right? I don't know, whatever, it doesn't matter. The walk, I logged the walk from a disc golf that was uh, 1.5 miles, 257 calories, no heart rate monitor, so who knows. Uh, then I played another round of golf that day at Ellison. That's 2.6 miles, another 460 calories, a little more elevation there. Then I went to work, and then I ate this meal. Throw it up on screen. So this would be the second at 8.15 p.m., 51 hours fasted. That would be beef shoulder uh, and two eggs. Not like a huge, huge meal there, but that's what broke my 51-hour fast. And, uh, you know, not to get too uh, graphic, but usually when I do a prolonged fast, once I eclipse 48 hours, I will have a, um interesting bowel movement which I imagine is a bunch of my gut biome being flushed out or whatever. But So now we're moving on to the 3rd. October 3rd, let's see. That was Saturday. I was working, so I didn't get to do anything in the morning. I ate again. Uh, throw it up here. 12.15 <laughs> uh, p.m. 16 hours fasting. Now that's a meal. Look at that. That's sick. We got a nice little steak there. It's, it wasn't a good steak. There's cheap steaks blow. A little bit of that beef shoulder. Probably a third pound of bacon. Four eggs. That, my friend, was a good meal. Uh, later that day, 
for dinner, I'll throw it up on the screen here. We have probably three quarter pound of salmon, some more of that beef shoulder, another one of those steaks, a little piece of Jarlsberg cheese there. That was pretty nice. I'm really enjoying the salmon. I was never a fish eater, but I started eating it because I wanted to stop taking fish oil supplements and said, I'm going to eat salmon once a week. And that's what I've been doing. Pretty good. Uh, after work, I ran that night. So at 8.45, hour and a half after I ate, I ran a 5K. 3.1 miles, 8.8 8 hour, sorry, 8 minute 47 pace. Says about 550 calories, 27 minutes on that 5K. Solid pace for me for my 5K. Uh, moving on to Sunday morning, the 4th. Uh, I did ride to work and I did ride home from work and it was all labeled as one ride in Strava here. So this is morning and night, one ride. I did go to the grocery store on this bike ride. So the ride home had some weight in it, but this, you know, 4.7 miles, not a whole lot, 200 calories, 25 minutes, nothing crazy as far as on the fourth eating wise. Uh, this was my breakfast on the fourth right there that's a nice breakfast uh 1 p.m 17 and a half hours fasting we have four eggs some beef shoulder half an avocado a couple pieces of swiss cheese and maybe like a quarter pound of bacon that was dank super dank um a couple hours later my customer mr walls he always makes pork rug and cheese sandwiches if you're from jersey you know what it is it's amazing uh, i did have one without the bun so in this picture we have a fat glob of white cheddar cheese one egg three pieces of pork roll kind of pushing the limit here of what's acceptable within the diet but you gotta live a little uh fast forward again two hours i ate again here we have a good good sizable amount of that beef shoulder two eggs uh, the other half of the avocado and a little bit more of that Swiss cheese. Then, like I said, afterwards, I had rode my bike. And we're moving on to the fifth. Let's see, I ate like one. <laughs> Yesterday was the fifth. Okay, so in the morning, I rode around. I rode 3 point, sorry, I rode 9.4 miles. Uh, played around a disc golf. Uh, this golf was Ellison, so two, I walked 2.6 miles within that nine-mile ride. I'd say the combination of both things collectively, maybe 800 calories, give or take. After that, I met with my insurance agent. I ate before that, so let's see. That would be this meal. Here, uh, so I, Sunday night, on that ride home, I stopped at Wegmans. I got oxtail, uh, two racks of ribs, and some lamb. Put that in the crock pot with an onion, 12 hours. Now, the thing is, you want to get all that connecting tissue. So ribs are really good for that. The oxtail is really good for that. So I did that overnight for like 12 hours. Then I made bone broth with the bones over the course of the day. But this is my meal in the morning. Uh, three eggs. Look at that sad. One of the yolks broke. A little bit of white cheddar and some of that meat there. Now this this mix has a lot of connecting tissue, kind of that chewy gooey stuff you might not like, but that's the good stuff. That's the good good good, the good good. Dude, all those little chunks of meat that came out of the inside of the vertebrae on the oxtail. Oh my god, oh <laughs> freaking good. Uh, so after that meal, I did this ride. Boom little carnivore loop did the bike ride with my buddy phil who's also doing meat tober that is 10 miles uh says 490 calories this was on my single speed bike i was wearing a 15 pound weight vest uh did not wear the heart rate monitor so who knows what the calorie burn is it is relatively flat 390 feet of elevation not really much after the ride we picked up some lumber so check out this picture that's epic Got some free wood. That right there is two two ten foot six by sixes and maybe sixty sheets of three quarter inch plywood. Those things are about 35, 40 pounds a piece, depending on how waterlogged they are. So we had to move all those into the truck and then unload them all to skate park. So that certainly was a little bit of exercise. Certainly was some calorie burn, which I mean, and it's also like two thousand dollars worth of wood I got for free. So 
Uh, yeah, that's freaking awesome. I'm gonna have a sip of water here. Can't believe I'm already 10 minutes in on this. It's crazy. Uh, then I went home. I did eat again. Uh, this is the meal up here on top. Looking kind of redundant, isn't it? That's correct. Um, in this one, that's some more of the oxtail rib lamb. Couple people, couple pieces of bacon. Uh, two eggs, a little bit of uh, white sharp cheddar cheese. I used the cheddar to get all the little bits of pizzas and meat and goop and fat and whatever is left in the in the in the bowl. So I'm getting every little bit of everything. I did have a little, maybe half a cup of beef in between all of this and a little bit of beef jerky while I was driving. Nothing significant. And then last night I went out and I ran a 5K. Uh, and I absolutely crushed this 5K. I also did 25 chin-ups, 25 pull-ups, and then ran the 5K. This was a crush of a 5K. Um, 750 average pace. Uh, I did wear the heart rate monitor, 160 beats per second, so I was I was up there. This has 400 calories. Who knows? Uh, it's supposed to be accurate, so I would imagine if a heart rate that high, that many calories, everything else is probably... Is every, probably guessing higher for the calorie burn. I PR'd my mile. I ran a 649 first mile mile in that run, which is crazy. And then I slowed down a lot. I had some cramping going and I was trying to muscle through it. So I slowed down to like an eight minute pace. Yeah, I really was going out, going out to burn it. And then now we here, we are here now. It is the morning of the sixth and I have yet to eat. And that's everything. Well, mostly everything. I obviously worked multiple days. And obviously with the work, I did some ramp work. I did some that. So a little bit of everything. Uh, so that was everything I ate and did for the most part during that. Uh, it is probably worth noting. I wear a weight vest like pretty often just like doing stuff. I just have it on. Um, so whatever. There it is. Now we're going to do mindful moments. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how I felt. Um as well as what was the other thing yeah we're talking about how i felt i also i took notes uh whenever i felt something that was noting i noted it so stay tuned after the moments and we're going to talk about that so this is where i hit the button you hear the classical music maybe i'll edit it in later Mindful moments. You know, a key part of, of happiness and, and mental and physical health is mindfulness. We need to be mindful. We need to think about things. We, we need to contemplate. You know, and uh, I, I, I hope you do. Today we're going to do a mindful moment. I'm not really sure. I guess this is probably a panicky moment. This will be a very interesting one because this is different than what we normally do. This is a moment. Someone else's mindful moment. I help kind of work them through. So, backstory, Tuesdays, I watch my girlfriend's kid. He stays here, he's on Zoom, school all day, whatever. He had a little bit of a meltdown this morning. Didn't want mom to leave. Mom had to go to work. You know, he gets her crying, you know, and, you know, mom was like, I gotta go, I gotta go, whatever. Perfect situation to try to, you know, Get a little mindfulness in so I, I waited for mom to leave and he was upset and then we sat down and i and i said i said how do you feel right now and he's like well i'm sad i'm like do you feel overwhelmed it's like well yeah well why do you why do you feel sad why do you feel overwhelmed well because i'm gonna miss my mom and i was like that's understandable like but you're gonna see your mom and like five hours but that's too long I said I understand you missed your mom but like like your mom has to go to work you know your mom has to go to work and she makes money so she could feed you and she could buy you stuff and you know so you guys can survive that's really important isn't it and he's like yeah it is and I was like and just think about it five hours isn't that long and he's like no five hours is so long and I'm like I know but also you know you get a one hour lunch so there's one hour of that five hours is an hour that you get to we get to enjoy uh, last week, we went for a little scooter ride. We actually scootered one and a quarter miles. Good scooter ride for, for a seven-year-old, for sure. 
And he's like, yeah. And I was like, and then we're going to the skate park later. And he's like, yeah. And, you know, he's starting to, you know, kind of cheer, a little, cheer up a little bit. And I was like, I told him, remember last week you finished your school work up pretty early. And then we had plenty of time in between then. So after your second Zoom, if, if you have it done, all your work done, then we can go and do anything. So that five hours really quickly turns into, you know, maybe two hours of stuff you get to like and you get to enjoy as long as you do your work and then by this point he was like yeah yeah we get to go to the skate park later and I mean it it was a beautiful mindful moment because we got you know we got a a seven-year-old who does struggle with behavior to to simmer down in the matter of maybe two minutes to think through um the time, the day, how he was feeling, acknowledging his feelings, saying, hey, you know, it's okay to feel that way, but also, like, let's put it in context. And then we moved on. And uh, it's great. It was a beautiful moment. It was very mindful. He's back, he got on the Zoom, back on there with his teacher, doing his work. It's great. So, mindful moments. Beautiful. I'm going to have another sip of water here, and then we're going to move on to my notes on how I felt and some of my general thoughts on week one of Meet Tober. I'm sorry. Meet Tober. Section three. Meet Tober notes and thoughts. By wrench. All right. So let's go over these notes first. Uh, 10 1, 6 27 p.m. I noted I am <laughs> fairly hungry. This would be 26 hours into my fast. Every prolonged fast around the 24-hour mark, you kind of get kind of hungry. It's kind of how it is. 10 to uh, 3 to 4 p.m., stomach gargling. This was 47 hours into my fast. I mean, that sounds pretty reasonable. <laughs> uh, 10 to late evening. Uh, this would be after my meal, after the fasting. Uh, slight stomach discomfort can make sense system was off for a while we kicked it back up um i forgot to mention earlier though the last meal i had before my fasting was entirely a keto meal so at this point uh i am solidly in ketogenesis uh and i don't know i don't eat a lot of carbs but i probably am in and out of that state so at this point you know the guy the biome was shut down for a while it ramped back up there's no fiber in it, no starches, no carbs, no sugar. So my stomach is probably like, what the heck is this? So who knows? Uh, 10-3. This was an interesting one. Uh, mid to late afternoon dry mouth. I don't know if that was just like a, a signal of hydration. I know hydration can be an issue with with fasting and with carnivore, trying to get enough salt in. At that point, I did eat a bunch of I ate a bunch of pieces of cheese like covered in salt drank a lot of water 10 4 I was sleepy like like one of that like when you are on the glucose roller coaster in between waves doing this like nodding out like I was at work and I was like yo I am tired like I am like struggling to keep my eyes open tired which is not common for me but also like I said my body I'm probably often in and out of keto because of my fasting, but never in it for a prolonged time. So at this point, you know, we're several days in and body's probably adjusting. 10-5. Uh, this would be yesterday. The day was all the stuff I did in the wood. I definitely was feeling lethargic. Uh, I felt low energy, uh, nothing at all with explosive fast twitch energy. Like I was on the golf, a disc golf course, like felt like I was trudging along. I felt like... I couldn't get a good snap on my throw. I just really, like I said, really felt lethargic. I know there's a hump with a lot of these things when you're, even though I'm in and out of like a keto state, mostly fat burning state, not having those like intermittent bursts of, 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 of starches and, uh, and complex carbohydrates and the vegetables I normally eat, you know, the system is probably making an adjustment period. My ride later in the day, it was decent. I had no problem loading the wood, but you know, whatever. Uh, So later that day, again, this is still yesterday, this would be um, before the 5k, but after everything else, I had late night high energy. I started doing pull-ups. I do, I usually do sets of five or 10 and I just like, just kind of got fired up, man. Just was like pumped. 
I literally was like, just holy crap. I don't like, I was just like buzzing hard. That's why I went out and did that 5K, set my PR on my mile. Uh, and, uh, you know, interesting. I had a feeling lethargic earlier in the day. I felt super high energy. Uh, while running, I was dealing with some stomach cramps. Uh, because I was, you know, in a high heart rate zone. I was in zone four or five for basically the whole run. So it's really pushing it. And I was dealing with a little bit of nausea on the run from pushing it into that zone, I think, I presume. When I got back, uh, I still felt that way. And my note here says, late night stomach discomfort, intermittent nausea. So after I got back, I felt kind of nauseous. Then I felt fine. Then as I was getting ready for bed, I started to get kind of nauseous again. And like after doing cooking food for 12 hours in the crock pot and, and the bone broth and all that good fun stuff, I'm like, I'm not throwing this shit up. I'm <laughs> not an option. So I ended up going to bed and I was tired enough from the run and everything that I just fell asleep while being that nauseous. I woke up in the night at least once super nauseous and tried to just fight through it. And I woke up today. It is the 6th and my note here is I feel great like i feel great i feel sharp i feel mental clarity i feel like primed right now like my legs are so sore as hell from that run upper body feels pretty decent i did a lot yesterday but i feel okay but i am like yo throw throw it at me let's go like i'm pumped don't see how that goes throughout the day um and now, uh, just my general thoughts on it. I kind of gave thoughts intermittently through that discussion, but yeah, I feel like my body is adjusting uh, a little bit. Of this, a little bit of that. Uh, we'll see what happens in week two. Certainly, um, I will make some note uh, worth noting uh, because this is a big thing with carnivore stuff. I am normally a once a day bathroom goer. I have been like one small bowel movement one day. I did not go at all. My buddy Phil is like a, he, like I poop six times a day kind of guy. And he's like amazed at how on his carnivore diet, he's going like once a day. Uh, he also has a gas problem. His wife is not happy about, and he has started like basically stopped farting. So he may have been more sensitive to the plants and everything. Cause he was already eating like Phil and I like eat amazing. Phil eats really amazing. So his adjustment, he might be more sensitive to those plant fibers. So maybe, maybe not. Interesting. Uh, I'm very excited to see where this goes. I'm very uh, excited to tell people when they, and they say, oh, that can't be good. And like, based on what? What do you know about it? I know a lot about food and nutrition and health, and I'm constantly learning and I'm constantly adjusting. And I was willing to try this. I read a couple books about it. I mean, if you look at it, take a step back. Yeah, you know, first of all, you're, you're trying to divide, you're going to divide food into three kingdoms, like food, like say animal based, plant based. I hate that term, and then like industrial food. Uh, I think you could easily say like, well, just sticking into just one category sounds fairly simplified. And why is it that saying, well, if you only eat plant matter, you'll be fine, and they're saying. But then saying, if you only eat animal matter, you won't be fine. Kind of doesn't make sense isolated. We've just been so indoctrinated into that red meat is bad thing is really the reality of it. You know, I had one person say like, oh, that can't feel good. I'm like, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. It feels good. You know when you eat a big meal and you're like, oh. You know when you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, man, my stomach looks nice and flat, you know? And it does not the rest of the day. You know that, like, post-meal uh, food coma, uh, food baby, uh, that leth lethargy? It doesn't exist with carnivore. It's crazy. Um, I will talk about the satiation versus satisf satisfaction thing in a second, too. Like, I eat. And my stomach still looks good and flat. I don't look bloated. I don't feel bloated. I, I feel like I could just eat and then just go right back to doing anything without any adjustment. Crazy. Very interesting. And like you, if you follow anything I do, like my normal meal is like two carrots, six Brussels sprouts, half a yam, a quarter pound of bacon, 
two eggs. That's like a presumably really awesome meal. With just the meat, you don't get that. It's super weird. It's like the it's like the stomach version of like brain fog or something. And it's really sick. I'm excited to see where that goes. Phil and I reflected on this a little bit too. It's crazy. Uh, now the satiation thing. Uh, very fascinating. I've read about this over and over again about how meat uh, protein is more satiating, less satisfying. Now, even now I've experienced this and I, and I, I completely... Well, I guess not completely, but I understand it. It's really, really hard to verbalize. I'll probably take another st- stab at this later. But it's like, it's not as satisfying eating this way because you're not getting all those like rewards from all like the starches and the sugars. Um, it certainly still tastes good, but it doesn't hit like, it almost feels like food is a drug. It's like a pleasure-seeking drug. It's kind of out of it, right? So I put this plate in front of me and I want to eat it. I start eating it. And I get to this point where, like, I'm kind of good. Like, my brain is still, like, wired the other way. My brain's like, no, you got to finish it. You want to you wanna finish it. And then my stomach's like, no, I'm kind of good, dude. And your brain's like, no, nah, like, you should do that. And then, like, a pint of ice cream <laughs> and then this and that. But, like, it's like, if, like, it's a yin and yang, a push and pull between your stomach and your brain, it, it feels like this diet has made my stomach more powerful than that brain or at least there's a more of an argument to where previously my brain was just like nah we're gonna do this like even if i'm full i'm just gonna keep shoveling my face phil and i both said this happened to both of us like i didn't finish a steak i left like a little little piece of it in the plate it's like i would have never done that before but here it is sitting there really interesting I haven't um, been quantifying the, qu- the calories. It's a little bit next level stuff. So I don't know if I'm eating less calories or more calories, what that deal is. Uh, certainly because it's also sober October. Uh, I haven't obviously drank anything. Or, I don't like do any drugs anyway. So sober for me basically just means not drinking beer. I did want a beer the first couple of days pretty badly. And now I haven't really been thinking about it. But that's also because I think the... Um, Carnivore thing in general is kind of not intimidating, but like it, 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 like it seems like such a big deal that I haven't even thought about beer at all. And it is worth noting, I would still drink a pot of coffee a day. But there it is. That's it. There's my general thoughts on Meatober. I will continue to log everything, I will continue to keep you updated. I've told everyone that has asked me about it that I will be doing this. So maybe we'll get, maybe we'll go from three views to like 10 views. That would be cool. And I'll have another sip of my delicious water. And we will read a Michael Pollan food rule. And then that'll be it for today's show. Last time we read rule eight, so now we're going on to rule number nine. Now, again, this is Michael Pollan's Food Rules. It's a cute little book, little illustration, little rule, and then a little breakdown of it. Not, you know, nothing's more than like a few pages, and there's very small pages. Look at this. It's one, one paragraph, one rule, one paragraph. Rule nine. Oh, I like this one. Avoid food products with the wordoid light or terms like low fat or non-fat in their names. I imagine they would say something because it's like they're lying to you or they're modified versions of something that already existed and obviously he advocates for a whole food diet. That is it. Michael Pollan Food Rules. Author of The Omnivore's Dilemma. You should read that book. Great book. And as always, I'll recommend Chris Kresser's The Paleo Cure. These two books... These two books will change your fucking life. Sorry to swear, but read them. I'll buy it for you on Amazon if you DM me. I will literally buy you that book. Or send you this one. Game changer. Thanks for checking it out, guys. Let me know if you got any questions. I can answer it next week. Um, in week two. Meat-tober update. If you're one of the few people that listen to it. And if not, Whatever. Thanks for watching. Rent your life a little bit for me. 
you'll thank yourself. And it is Wrench Life with a Y. Because there is nothing, nothing that is as valuable as feeling good. Goodbye.